Bert Breer, who's brought to you by Chevy. Looking for more power, capability, and technology? With Chevy trucks, you're ready for anything. Chevrolet, together, let's drive. Bert, what's going on? Oh, not much. Not much Thursday. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting tonight, definitely. Well, you heard in that is clip it? that the Jets are cautious. How come you're not working? I am working. I'm working. How I come am- you're not on the road? I'm on the road for a handful of the games, not all of them. This one will be from my basement. Nice. Love that. This will be an easy one for you. Love that. I know. I know. I'm going to I'm probably going to go next week. The Giants and the Cowboys play down there next probably. week. So. Dispatches from Ducks. Better game. Huh? Can't wait. <laughs> I love it. Uh let's let's talk about what we just heard there, which is the Jets are a cautionary tale for the New England Patriots because the Jets yep. have just ruined young quarterback after young quarterback. Should the Patriots be paying attention to what the New York Jets have done over and over and over again? Or the Carolina Panthers? Or the, I mean, it's just it's an epidemic across the NFL, and I think you know there's such great examples now of like how environment can affect the young quarterback. And I think like, look, guys, like I'm not saying that Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson wouldn't have made it otherwise, but those guys were drafted onto playoff teams. You know, um, in the case of Mahomes and Allen, it's because they traded up, and Lamar slipped all the way down to the 32nd overall pick. So um, there are very few quarterbacks that are capable of overcoming bad circumstances. So you have to find a way to generate better circumstances for your quarterback before you throw them out there. Uh, The the one I could think of over my time covering the league is Andrew Luck, where I think his circumstances weren't very good and he still made the playoffs his first three years in a row. That's I I still think Andrew Luck is underappreciated for how good he was in overcoming those circumstances. It's very rare. Matthew Stafford sort of survived more than anything else. I would say he'd be an example, but there aren't very many. And, you know, I think, you know, you look at Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, Geno Smith, those guys have all played really well through two weeks. I think Geno's has reestablished himself. I hear people around here talking about Geno last week. They were out of their minds the way they were. Geno is a good quarterback in the league now. And Baker is okay, a where good do you quarterback put him? in the league. Where do you Sam put Geno? Like, where do you put Geno Smith in the league? Like between 10 and 15 probably. Okay. So I agree. Uh, this is my point about those guys. And where do you put Baker Mayfield? Probably maybe in, like right, right, right around that same range. Great. Is it, are either of those two quarterbacks going to lead their team to a Super Bowl win right now nope. in the current NFL? Probably nope. not. Okay. So this is what you risk missing yep. out on if you are the Patriots or the Jets with Gene. Or so let's say the Jets with Geno Smith or the Browns with Baker Mayfield. And those guys were not disasters for their teams. I mean, Geno Smith wasn't good. Baker Mayfield, I think, was better in Cleveland. But the risk to those teams by playing their guys and playing them in a bad situation was that they might miss out on the chance to have a franchise, I use that term loosely, (laughs) franchise quarterback who's somewhere in the 10 to 15 range and not a guy who's going to win you a championship anyway. Is it worth that risk? I think it is. I think it's worth the risk to play the guy and find out if he can be Andrew Luck or Matthew Stafford. Yeah, and and be one of those guys who is, I think, uh, one of those elite quarterbacks. Even though, and I I, 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 I used to, I admit, I used to like to crap on Luck all the time as being a little overrated. But, I think he's underrated. Like I think we can really, look back, I think we can look back at it and say he's underrated. Well, I mean, like if you go back, go back and look at those teams. They, they were went, dreadful. His first year, he goes to the wild card round. His second year, he goes to the divisional playoff. His third year, he's in the AFC Championship game, and then because they were so bad around him. He winds up, winds up getting like start, he starts to get hurt, and like that was kind of where everything came undone. Was when he it, it finally got to the point where he's hit so much that he couldn't stay on the field. But like I think like if you, in retrospect, if you go back ten years and you look at it, like again look at those teams. Like he brought look at the team he brought to the AFC title game. It's insane. Yes, I think maybe my problem was was everyone was telling us he was going to be the next Brady or Manning. And I think I better, think that was maybe yeah. why because we in kept a better in a better situation maybe he would have been possible possible were the were the Colts wrong to be playing him on a bad team no because no. he was ready he was ready clearly he was ready I, but I think it's a case by case thing like Andrew Luck you didn't have to do a whole lot to like he didn't need to be rebuilt in any way Andrew Luck came in having played for Jim Harbaugh in a pro style offense at Stanford and was a very developed and evolved quarterback started for three years there mm-hmm. like and had seen and been through a lot and so i i think these are all case by case is caleb williams ready to play in the nfl right now i think he's 
I think he's ready. Yeah. I don't think you have to do a ton to change what he does. That's what it is. It's like to me it's like the fundamental part of it, right? Like is does the kid have bad habits that you have to break? Are there things that you've got to rebuild fundamentally? Jordan Love was a tire fire when they threw him out there in his second year. And like I think the Packers people would tell you if we had played Jordan Love early on, we would have ruined him. And like what made it for him and he obviously had really high end potential was the chance to sit and get rebuilt fundamentally and they it was a ground they they viewed it as a ground up operation and like they wound up with a really good quarterback as a result of it. I think Jordan Love could become the kind of quarterback you can win a Super Bowl with. Maybe. I don't think the Bears are wrong to be playing Caleb Williams right now. And I don't think the Patriots would be wrong if they get Drake May in there at some point. I think I don't think either team is wrong for playing these quarterbacks. I think you have to be able to manage it though. I think the one here's the here's the nuance to what the, what's happened with the Bears. Go back and look at that first week, and then look at the second week, right? The first week he played like crap, like played awful, right? And I don't think it went the way that anybody on that offensive coaching staff or Caleb himself wanted it to go. But they won the game, and I think there's something to that too, is that like they were able to block a punt and return it for a touchdown and get a pick six on defense, and they won the game. And so... Like, they didn't need Caleb Williams to go out there and be Superman on every snap and save them on every snap. And they just needed him to go out there and play football. And so Caleb, over the first two weeks, because of the situation he's in from a team standpoint, is able to go out there and kind of test his limits and see where he's at. You guys saw, like, Chris Collinsworth going crazy over, like, like it was in the second quarter of that game, like, where, I so you see this, like, where Collinsworth yep. went nuts when he, like, threw a slant over the middle, right? That's coming from the production meeting, right? And that's coming from Shane Waldron and Matt Eberflus saying to the NBC crew, we're trying to teach him to take the layups. That's where that's coming from. And so because of the team thing, right? Because the, the, the defense was good enough to hold them on that Houston game, right? He's not playing from behind because they can run the ball okay. He's not like in a position where he's going to be in third and long a lot. That's where I think Would the you- things can come undone. What did you make of him and Stroud after the game? That's sort of going viral. That was interesting. Did you see that? I yeah. has Caleb commented on it yet? Uh, I don't think that no, he there's has. Something off. Of, Stroud Bert, said there's something. something off with him. I don't know what it is. There was that was it's weird. Just, that was I would agree. That it's was an entitlement weird. thing. I don't know. Um, I thought that was because Stroud was legitimately trying to help him. They're the same age. Hey, though. listen. Huh? They're the same age. But if Stroud, I if I was if I was Caleb Williams and I beat him out for a Heisman like 24 months ago and a guy that's a month older than me is now talking to me like he's Patrick Mahomes or like a veteran quarterback no, I could see why you'd be frustrated he was with trying that. to help him I mean I, I know but like the way it came like, off was like hey kid let me tell you how to play and I'd be like you know what we're we're yeah. the same age I mean I'm not gonna kill him over it but I I agree I was I thought it was a, just a little a little bit of a weird interaction although like yeah. you lose the game you take it hard I understand that too. It was weird, for sure. Yeah, um, Very I, weird. Yeah, it was a little odd. Hey, if you like that clip, check out more videos from Zolak and Bertrand right here. For more Patriots analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 98.5thesportshub.com.